Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, good. I'd, I'd like to hear you an acoustic set now on the <laughs> box. Lucky me. This first one is called Another Direction. When I dreamt of the dead birds, Elaine asked what it meant. And when I said I wasn't sure, she asked me to speak from the perspective of one of the dead birds. And I thought, if something big were happening, I mean something biblical, therapy would not be the forum to share it. God didn't ask Moses to speak from the perspective of a promised land. Maybe in this room I am a reverse Moses, a prophet turned in another direction, stutterless, stranded, at the foot of a mountain. My friends all feel it. L.A., India, Staten Island, the uncertain days, the winter coming. But later at night in the sanctuary of my own home, my sweater is the color of a field I have always dreamt of and keeps me warm. On the street, the cars are parked perfectly still, and not one leaf shakes on one tree. The child upstairs opens her hands to release marbles. Glass beads roll towards the four corners of the earth. My husband writes sermons in the room next door, and I think I could go there anywhere. History. Behind the baseball diamond where they blast fireworks every 4th of July and play old Springsteen and Neil Diamond over a staticky speaker lies the train track and the story of the boy who died there. Shy, dreadlock, with bells strung by yarn in his tangled hair. He was listening to his Walkman when his shoelace caught. So someone else said he was shot behind a hotel and it was the other side of town. I know this much there is an inn everyone agrees is haunted. That history set, carved like my number onto the deck of his skateboard. That quiet boy who did not have a pen, just a pocket knife, and skated away. Return. It comes back so easily. I meet someone who grew up in the town where I once sat on an old sheet in the park, watching fireworks explode over Zeppelin tracks. First with my parents, then with the boy. I loved his fine sandpaper sideburns, lemon and cedar chips, Italian ices melting on the sheet, pink and yellow sky trail of hazy dust heat. Bang! A pot falls to the floor when I am a baby. I do not flinch. My father realizes something. Fluid is trapped in my ears. I cannot hear at all those first months. I learn the world through gesture, shape. My mother's ripe lips moving close together, then apart, into language I cannot live without. So I have um, a student here. Oh, I don't want to embarrass her, but she's got her hands up and waving. Yeah, that's bad. Um, and I wrote this poem before your class. There's always, there's always a favorite, and now it's your class. But this one was written prior to that, and I had just left teaching to go back into an office job, which then I left subsequently. So it's a victorious turnout, but this was before that. Reading Philip Levine's What Work Is of English 220. Kostas is the first to offer an interpretation. I finally get it. We've been reading this poem for three days, and we still don't know what it's about. That's what work is. We spend all week on the poem. My interview suits are already out of the closet. Heel shoes on indoor office carpeting, shaking hands, and talking about transferable skills. I want to leave them with something important before I go back to that other light. Is it about work or is it about love? Is he talking to his brother, to himself, or to us? Yes, I think. Of course, these kids know more than work, but more about work than I did at 18, and sells real estate, Ella flips burgers, and arranged her sister's funeral as the only English speaker in her family. I want to tell my students that I love them, but I don't think I am supposed to say such things 
So I say, you are my favorite class. And they say, you said that to the other class. And I say, they were my favorite until I met you, and now you are my favorite. And they don't believe me. So I tell them, if we were all out at sea in this class, and the other class were drowning, and I only had the last, but I don't have to finish. They get it. <laughs> so, okay, I had, it was great to hear some new work from my friends, and I, I was saying I have some fresh and then some classics, so <laughs> hearing classics is like hearing I Want You Back and ABC on the jukebox who passed in the set list, so for classic. Um, Shukran, I practiced saying it, the one word I know in Arabic. Thank you to the busboy, the bartender, to the skinny kid with gel back hair vacuuming a forever stained rug. From the Regency balcony on Mount Sobis, <laughs> Jerusalem stone shines the way it did in golden tapestries, in distant living rooms on my grandparents' walls, smoothed by palms and tears, my lips form the foreign word. Over and over for every utensil adjustment, centimeter of water, my hands tremble at the weight of the pitcher, while the waiter smiles, says, Shukran is too formal, and teaches me a new word, tells me in a language I know I need to learn the way real people talk. In the streets which grow so, so solemn, a pulse a buzz in the distance with darkness. I just have two more. Um, this one is called Ask Me, and it was inspired by the, the, what put me over the edge and having to quit my office job was having to wear an Ask Me button at a conference where people then approached me for three days and asked me where the bathroom was, where this was. So I thought about more interesting questions that they could ask me. <laughs> ask me about Ed's face when he freed the cows on the sound of farm. Ask me about rolling to the Mount of Olives after the bottom of the resurrection. My grandfather's chest set, split marble queen, the rope we used to swing from. Ask me about the Garden of Grail, the quarterback who found Jesus, breaking piles of leaves. Ask me who stole the statue of St. Francis. The desert Abraham made a thousand promises with God, the garden of drying ceramics. The car song drive being both a warning and a wish asked me who left for a city. And this is the last one. Psalm. We are not supposed to sing when someone drowns, do not rejoice. But someone is always drowning in the sea, I am not supposed to sing. If someone's always drowning somewhere, someone's drowning. When can I rejoice? I've wasted so much water. Thank you.